And of course, the big story today, a lot for us uh, to focus on, a lot for us to read. The UK government has released an avalanche of documents, strategies, consultations, research, all based around the drive to reach its target of net zero emissions by 2050. So, Mike, to you, first of all, a huge amount to digest. But what's your instinct? Are the policies and the investment there for us to reach net zero on time? I think overall, I feel I feel a bit sad about it because um, it does have a lot of you know um, good things in there. They're just not scaled up to the point that we need them. And I think um, it, just to give a sense of perspective on the scale, I think I added up something like two and a half million pounds a year's worth of government spending, which is like um, well, defence spending is maybe twenty times that size. And um, we're talking about 27 billion pounds worth of spending um, on new road infrastructure. So it just hasn't got the perspective right for a climate emergency, which is kind of such a shame um, in the run up to the COP when everyone's looking at us to, to see whether we're co how coherent and serious we really are. But Mike, isn't the hope that there'll be lots of, of private investment that will come in? Yeah, and maybe that will may, maybe that will help us. But if I look at the scale of uh, of, of what's being um, what's being trumpeted here, you know, I, I think you know they've underegged the new jobs opportunity. And if you look, for example, at um, what they're talking about for uh, heat pumps, if you look at the, you know, there's there's um, you know uh, 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 some spend on on subsidising heat pumps, but that uh, that equates to helping about one household in every thousand every year. To get a heat pump, which is, you know, that's a small, that's a small pinprick uh, of a dent in the problem. Okay, and Judy, what's your overall thought? Does this look like a credible plan to you? I see it as a very expensive industry-based action around technology. I do not see it as a formula that can enable people of lower income to participate right now or less wealthy countries in the world to follow this formula. I mean, there's a delay. They talk about cheaper prices to come and so on. How long that's going to take is anyone's guess. And well, I think that what we really need to do in the meantime, because of the delay, is to pay more attention to people-centered actions that can make a big difference. For example, food waste, graphically represented, you know, as a point of emission, food waste drawn as a country would be the third largest country in the world. Well, yes, and let's talk about the cost to individuals, shall we, Mike? Because I know that um, a recent poll said, for example, that the public support most climate policies unless there's a personal cost. And you can understand that, can't you? So going back to that heat pumps issue, which has been a big kind of attention grabber in, in all of this, is there enough financial support and incentive for people to switch away from gas boilers here? Well, there's, there's some incentive, but but almost certainly not enough. I mean, I think you know, we, we've touched on, on the sort of the big sadness for the, the, the opportunity that hasn't yet been taken here, because this whole low carbon transition plan could be served up in a way that is financially attractive for the average household. And I think we've, we've just heard the point, you know, that is really, really important. And it's all about putting together a proper coherent package by which, okay, some things, some really high carbon things in life are going to get more expensive, but overall, there's an opportunity for the average, there should be an opportunity for the average household to actually be better off, especially if they take some behavior change, um, you know, in this low carbon transition. What's not to like about it, along with the millions of new low carbon jobs that we could be having? And the, the government's talking about some of that, but overall, it just hasn't got it yet a package that's properly attractive to everyone in the UK. And that's such a shame because it could be. And of course, Judy, for heat pumps to be green, uh, we need electricity to come from green sources. We need more of it as well. So what about that switch to make the, the grid uh, greener and cleaner? Does that sound like a credible plan that's on the table there? I mean, some of it is credible because we, the technology is coming and so on. And we're talking about lots of green jobs. And if there's lots of green jobs, that's a great thing. But this people dimension I keep coming back to is really important. For example, if you look at the gender dimension, which of those jobs they are actually thinking about appeals to the female population? You know, even if you look at something very simple, gender based, all the power tools are based on the size and, and the weight of a man's hand. You know, all these things really matter in images on how the population participates in this industrial revolution. 
that, that, that's a whole other area that we could talk about sometime, uh, but perhaps we haven't got the time to, uh, to, to delve now. But, uh, Mike, what about leadership at COP26, UK a host? Is this the kind of plan that Boris Johnson can walk in and go, look, we're doing this in the UK, all you other countries have to step up? Is it enough? Well, I think my fear is that the government underestimates just how smart and discerning a lot of the people going along to COP26 are going to be because, you know, it doesn't, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to be able to look at this strategy and see that it's not, it's not really enough and it could be much better and it doesn't quite have the coherence that we could be seeing. So, you know, I'm sad about that because I think, you know, that the, most of the attendees at the COP will understand that, that this isn't really a proper serious strategy that is fully, um, uh, fully aligned with the scale of the challenge that we face. And it's a shame because the opportunity to actually rearrange the UK economy a bit and steer it in a way that it absolutely can, uh, you know, can be leading. It's such an it's such an it's even an such a huge economic opportunity as well. If we were to push the button really hard on all the new technologies we need and all the new skills that we need for the global low carbon transition. Very briefly, Judy, a quick thought of what could have been in it. Was there a big idea you think they missed? Well, I think the approach to negotiations is a big one. We've got to collaborate as a world and kindness and consideration for other countries is an element that's missing. We're constantly talking about China as a kind of demonized polluter and, and so on. But the aggregate pollution is because there's billions of people there. And the per capita pollution is actually making China, if you look at it, fall way down the list. And the UK rise right up the list when, when you talk of historical things and per, per, per capita and so on. So a generosity about how we move forward together and finding solutions together. And of course, not such only expensive industrialized solutions would really help the world.